Hey everybody, uh, Brian Good here. Welcome to uh, Fall Talk. Don't forget that starting next Tuesday, is it Tuesday? Yes, Tuesday. Uh, Snow Talk officially starts in the blog. Yay. All right, uh, well, let's uh, talk about the current setup, which is somewhat fall-like now, and it won't be, though, in the afternoon periods, the next several days. We actually have a warm front that is in the process of getting its way through wave country. It's going to surge north and northeast. Uh, we'll see the wind direction shift around the southeast and then south in the coming hours. Rain breaking out ahead of the front. That's going to stay up in Ohio. Not a factor for us. Here's a water view shows uh, clearly where the warm front is um, as it moves off to the north. Again, here's the uh, prefrontal rain well ahead of it. And then we got the front, cold front. All the high clouds ahead of that. That's our weather this afternoon and this evening will be the high clouds increasing. And then we've got the front itself moving in, but there's not a lot of moisture with this front. You can see even it's struggling here to hold the rain together. A lot of it concentrated more in the tail end with the moisture values and dew points are a little higher. But, um, you know, we've said this many times, when you're in a drought pattern, uh, go in the low end uh, on, on rain totals because it's, it's really tough to get a lot out of it. And the, the main setup here, uh, let me broaden the view out, for that is because we've got a Pacific jet and these systems are just crossing over the United States rapidly. So when they move so rapidly across the Great Lakes, especially, you only have a south wind for maybe eight hours at best. That's not enough time to get a lot of moisture to funnel in ahead of the front uh, to get a decent amount of rainfall. It's moving too fast. So just as it starts to pull it in, you only get just a little bit of rain out of it, and it's over. Also, on the colder side of things, it moves so quickly, it doesn't have a chance to pull in cold air. It'll pull in cooler air, but cooler air is uh, nothing... Uh, shocking the way it's been so far and then it moves so quickly out that you get the south wind back again and you warm up and it's just non-stop up and down up and down up and down but when you're dry and the ground's dry the ups can be significant and perhaps even record territory so in order to get a colder pattern a more active system this end of the jet needs to arc itself more into canada we get more of an arctic flow coming out of the uh, canadian provinces and then that creates a deeper storm system, a slower storm system, and that's when you get some crazy weather. But no sign of that, at least the next seven days. Uh, let me show you a future cast. It shows the warm up this afternoon. We begin to feel the effects of the front with the clouds around. The rain shed showed off until after midnight. Again, there's not a lot of green showing up here. Spotty showers, maybe a rumble of thunder. But as you see by the wind arrows, even for the morning rush tomorrow, the front still isn't through here yet. You'll watch uh, the arrows, they'll turn as we head toward late morning and midday especially in Indiana, that's when the front moves in and look how the temperatures drop. So there will be a drop temperature-wise for those in Indiana. Here in Louisville, we may see is somewhat of a drop. It depends on how much sun we get breaking through the front as it passes through to kind of counterbalance the cool flow and the sunlight heating uh, effect. So either way, cooler than today. Rainfall-wise, well, you can see <laughs> nothing exciting when it comes to rainfall. All right, so what is uh, the setup here? Here are the ensembles of the GFS, the Euro, and the Canadian model. Here's GFS, here's the Euro, and here's Canadian. This is the current setup, 500 millibars. This is the main flow that we look at. And you can see the, the ripples in the northern fringe. That's that fast flow of the Pacific Jet, these little ripples that come through. Still quite a bit of warmth, though. Warmth can go pretty far up when you get a Pacific flow like that. But there's no blue showing up, no uh, cold air surges. Now, confidence down the road is not as high on the ensembles, but this is going to be about November 10th. But what you look at is the overall troughiness it shows in our neck of the woods and a ridging in the west. The Euro not as aggressive with it, and the Canadian is uh, with a trough in our area. So it does show a pattern change coming our way as we head toward election day and just after. Typically, when we see this in the outlook, we have to add a day or two to it, and then we see the effect of it because these models are a little too quick uh, on showing these changes like this. But I think by the time we get into the first 10 days of November, we should see something a little more crazy happen. Here's the latest model trends. You see the warm surges, a little warm pushes all the way through November 1st, Halloween, breezy, and windy. And then we get that dip that shows up around November uh, 5th that could lead into a storm system around Election Day. And that will be important for uh, voter turnout, for sure, if we get an active storm system across the lower 48. So I'm sure the politicians will be looking at that. That's it for now, guys. i got a lot going on trying to get this uh, winter outlook all together. So these blogs will be short the next few days. Uh, Lauren will have an update on midday. We'll see you then.